not ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, yeah, that's all right. Beach yeah. Oh, this is going well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I imagine this will work. See, well, I think you've used pretty well. Oh, shit. Uh, hey, Sydney JS. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? You good? Uh, I was going to say, like, there was a really great turn up, but then everyone was like, oh, uh, Ben's coming on, I'm going to go for a, a piss or something. So, uh, everyone left. Um, I don't know what state of origin means. I expect uh, you're talking about where I'm born. Uh, I'm from Melbourne, uh, in, in Victoria, which is the best state in the country. Um, I, uh, let's see. I don't have a book, but I'll sell you something in the car park if you're interested. Um, and I, I was wondering the other day if WebRTC was maybe successful when it was used for porn. So I don't know if it's being used for porn yet. I'm not into that, but you guys might be. So there you go. Um, for anyone who doesn't know me already, um, there's a lot of familiar people here, but there's a lot more that I, you know, I thought that I would know more people here, but. Anyway, um, my name is Ben Schwartz. I, uh, I have a blog called uh, GermanForBlack.com. Um, on Twitter, I'm Ben Schwartz. Uh, on GitHub, I'm Ben Schwartz everywhere on the internet, except for like Skype, where I got my username really early. Uh, I'm Ben Schwartz also. Uh, I work on this. You know, if anyone knows this, it's the HTML living standards specification for developers. I made this a couple years ago. Uh, that was a thing. Uh, I worked on JS Conf Down Under with Sharky and Steve and Jared, wherever they are. Uh, recently, I released a thing called Gallery CSS, which is a uh, all CSS gallery thing. So the buttons and everything is, there's no JavaScript on this page, so everything is just uh, animation, it uses target selector, and it's, uh, it's pretty rad, I think. Uh, I made a screencast for it, where you can give me money. That would be awesome. Uh, so I, I explained the process that I went through uh, building the, the whole thing. Actually, the reviews down here are actually, these are using gallery CSS also. So you just use the, the classes, and you get like this animation that just plays. Uh, if you use the autoplay class, it just works, right? Uh, I sell it for 15 bucks, but if you come and like be friendly, I'll just give it to you later. So, yeah, just come and be friendly, really. Uh, other thing that I do, I, I run this thing called the intro. I do it more in, in Melbourne than I do in Sydney, but occasionally I run a drink up, or occasionally I run a workshop, uh, or you know, we're, we're trying to do like other cool stuff where we teach people about web stuff and try and do it as free and cheap as, as possible, right? Um, Anyway, so uh, that's me. So I was like, oh, I want to do a to-do list. So if you know, um, this is running at about blank. Yeah. But I have this like list of stuff. And I can do that. Yeah. So what I did, uh, which is kind of interesting, is I just used the... Um, I, I just went into my web inspector in, in about blank and then set content editable on an OL and then I just typed things because I knew that I was just going to show that stupid slide for like two minutes. So, uh, there you go. I thought that was interesting. Maybe it's not. Is it interesting? Come on. Come on. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Come on. Uh, so, uh, what I'm going to talk about tonight is. Um, it's, it's not about like script or it's not about uh, like anything super technical. Uh, it has to do with uh, feelings, which I know, uh, you know you're both JavaScript people and in Sydney, so feelings are a little bit difficult for you guys. But, uh, <laughs> okay, okay, so um, I, uh, I'm an independent. I work for myself uh, in Melbourne. I work with uh, a bunch of different companies from uh, startups with no money to uh, banks, to publishing companies of all you know, different sizes and shapes. Uh, and what I'm going to talk to you about is a project that I worked on last year. Um, doesn't look so awesome on this projector, but it's, you know, it's OK. Um, it's called Discovery. It's uh, an in-flight magazine for Cathay Pacific, the airliner, uh, from Hong Kong. Uh, so I worked with uh, some people from Sydney here. 
And uh, it's, it's HTML. This was coming from a publishing company who use iPads to publish content, uh, where traditionally, you know, well, not traditionally, where they were trying to break the cycle of traditional publishing, they were publishing magazines that were 700 megabytes uh, on iPad, which kind of sucked. And so they, what they wanted to do was build a magazine that was all HTML, ran out of a CMS, uh, it worked on all sorts of different devices, different shapes, sizes, the whole, the whole deal, different capabilities. And uh, this, is, this is it running live at uh, Cafe, uh, Discovery, CafePacific.com magazine. You'll find it if you look for it. Uh, the basic premise of, of this project is you get on an airplane, you uh, join their Wi-Fi on their flight. Uh, if, I think if you're in the economy, you probably have to pay for it. If you're in business class, it's probably free. I don't know. I haven't been on one of their airplanes. They didn't give me one. I thought they would, but they didn't. <laughs> Uh, no, they're, they're a great client. Honestly, I should never have said that in front of all of you. <laughs> so uh, the premise is you get on, you join the Wi-Fi, and this is kind of like the, the intranet thing that you get for free, right? Like I said, before you start surfing the web. Uh, it's the same thing that you pull out of your seat pocket in front of you when you're bored and you've got nothing to do on the airplane. Um, and I'll just zoom it down. Uh, it's a magazine. Um, if you're on a desktop computer, uh, you can use keyboard controls. I don't think I'm on the internet anymore, but that's okay. Um, it, it uses keyboard controls. Um, if you're on a touch device, it uses swipes, so you can swipe left and right. Uh, you can scroll up and down and stuff. It looks really great when you're not zoomed out. Uh, and uh, it's generally a pretty large project. Um, it uses a bunch of cool, cool web technology. It uses local storage. It uses uh, HTML uh, application cache. So the whole magazine will actually work offline. So when you, when you join the Wi-Fi and you go to the magazine, it actually downloads all the content for the magazine onto your device without telling you. HTTPS. <laughs> HTTPS, right? Uh, oh, it's broken because I'm not online or something. It looks really good on the phone. Uh, email Craig. Uh, so, um, it, yeah, it, it's broken. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't work offline. Maybe I broke it. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it stores to your device. And, the, you know, the, the idea is that when you're, maybe you fall off the Wi-Fi or maybe, like, the web server on a plane isn't as good as you believed it would be, which turns out is actually true, um, it would, it's uh, good, it's not actually boring. Uh, so yeah, it would just be available. Um, it, we detect touch for different circumstances. We detect SVG. Uh, we're using icon fonts for, for everything um, over the whole, you know, the whole interface, the whole thing. Uh, it's it's kind of cool. Um, now I'm going to show you some of the. How many people build websites every day? Put your hand up. Okay, cool. How many people have done responsive design before? How many people think responsive design is awesome? Yes. How many people? Okay, well that's kind of a loaded question. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. how, how many people uh, really like the experience of building and like working with designers in responsive web design? There's like two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is my experience, and I'm, I'm just going to talk to you about it a little bit. Um, <coughs> Damn it, they cheat. <laughs> Sports ball. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, okay, so uh, I uh, I worked with a designer, um, Craig Rosinski, who's an Australian from Sydney. Uh, he actually lives in Kobe, in Japan. And this is the Dropbox that we share with each other. Um, these are all PSD files uh, and tablet portrait. Okay, well, there's a bunch there. Um, phone, uh, then the back pages, which are like different kinds of content. Uh, then there's, okay, this is the Kindle, the Kindle back pages, of course, and then the desktop, and then there's like uh, these old archived ones here. These are all uh, templates. Um, they're all templates that had to be implemented. And like, you, you might go, okay, well, like, maybe there's like 30 templates there. There's actually a lot more. Um, so, how am I going to do this? Okay, so this is how, uh, this is, I don't know, Article 1 template. And you'll see, like, we've got a big image of a rhino and you know, title and stuff. We've got this big, interesting drop cap where I used, like, a bef like before CSS thing. It was kind of fun. Uh, but 
Let's go and uh, let's see. Oh, there's a layout. That's interesting. That one. Um, Should I open this before I knew it? <laughs> yeah, so that's the iPhone version of this template. Obviously, it's zoomed out just a little bit. <laughs> uh, so if you zoom in, you go, okay, well, um, it looks like maybe you just needed to make it one column. That was like, that wasn't too difficult for you, right? Um, let's go and look at the other template. You'll note that not only is the text a different color, but the text is not on the image. It's under the image, and it's larger. And the footers here are under the image still. And the image is actually a different crop entirely than the other image, right? And so you might go, all right, we'll stop whining. That's one template that's not so hard, right? Wrong. So. <laughs> That particular area, from the top of the browser down to there, that's one module. Right? And by um, there's an editorial team. They put out a magazine every single month using these templates. And so of, of just this, this one little area, we have a large header, small header, medium header, serif uh, times two, sans serif times two. Uh, we can play the titles on the left, on the right, on the top, on the bottom. So you can like imagine there's like quite a little bit of power for the editorial team there to be able to change you know the way everything looks, and then it looks different on every different device in the world. <laughs> in my personal opinion, uh, and that you know that goes on for this little gallery thing here. It's got a slideshow button. Sometimes they don't have a slideshow button. Uh, sometimes they have a caption, sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's a four up with a big one on the left, but it, sometimes the big one's on the right. Sometimes that changes on a mobile device. Uh, there's this little sidebar called Fastbacks, and that's got a little bell, bell bar thing here. Um, bell bar? What does it mean? Bar bar? I work out all the time. Uh, so, <laughs> That, you know, that, that was really fun too. That's, uh, that's actually a horizontal rule with a, with a class edit, and then I did it before, uh, before CSS, and I did it after CSS, and I get, did like a little uh, generated content and put a border radius on it, so it's like all in CSS, and I think that's cool, but everyone's looking at me really <laughs> right now. So. No, 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 that's good. It's, 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 it's pretty light to lift. But, uh, it's light. I, 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 do you even lift, bro? No. Uh, so, <laughs> Uh, and, and sometimes you know the images have gutters on the sides, and sometimes they don't. What I'm getting at is there's a hell of a lot of stuff here to make a magazine work on the web. Um, I wrote CSS for this project for about six weeks, and I mean every day for six weeks. The app already worked; it was already offline. It was already keyboard controls, touch, just start, uh, whatever. Like I'm just talking, just writing, writing codes. Uh, okay. Is this good? You alright? It's yeah, pretty late. You guys are just tired or something. Yeah, I, right. I expect applause after all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh. Bloody uh, Melvin's. This, uh. <laughs> hey, I put these slides together at 5.25 p.m. when I finished my day job up here. <laughs> visiting, so it's a little bit tricky for me. Uh. This is Luke W.'s, Luke Rabolski's image I stole it from his website. Uh, I was going to say something here and I don't remember what it was, so we'll skip by it. Luke Rabolski is really amazing, so you should go to his website and read all of his stuff. He's great. Uh, okay, so here's an article that I wrote. Uh, it's actually not an article, it's a screencast, and it's free. Um, you can see me in, in there looking like a dork and everything. Um, but I did this in... CSS. Yes, yeah, all in CSS. The video, CSS, right? Um, I did this in, in November uh, 2011. Uh, when I wrote it, this was a feature of SAS that required SAS Pre, um, which is not true anymore. So I should update that. Okay. So just, just forget that. How many people use SAS or a preprocessor? Cool. Uh, okay, 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 cool. So, what I covered in this video was the technique that I used to handle media queries in this app. So, like, I've complained a lot about templates and how hard that was and, like, my emotions and stuff. And I know you guys don't get that, but uh, let's see, let's see. 
you like my Sublime Text icon? It's a different one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I'm such a dog. Okay. Uh, so this feature of, can you guys read that? Or should I invert it? It's good. It's good. Okay. I don't know how to use a computer very well. Awesome. Uh, okay. So this is a mix-in. And you can probably read it. I've set up a couple of uh, media queries here where I've named them. I've named them phone, small tablet, tablet, and I believe the last one is like other desktop or widescreen. Desktop, okay. Um, so the way this works is, is, is anyone really confused by this? No, I'll just skip over it then. All right, I like that. Cool. Uh, so, Basically, you pass in a block to this to this uh, this this mix-in thing, and it dumps in. See where it says at content? It dumps in the block that you pass to this mix-in, and it, it makes it a media query. Right. So here's it in use. So you're doing your little special module, uh, and then you're like, oh, well, the font size needs to change on a tablet. Uh, it'd be really great if I didn't have to have my style here. And then my media query, like, way down the bottom, right? So why this is really cool is you can say, all right, at include for the tablet, uh, make it 7.5 EMs. Cool, right? And so what SAS will do, uh, SAS will actually bubble the media query to the top in the end, right? So it goes from my modules dash dash special to at media screen size puts in that selector and then dumps in the H1 and you get 7.5. Is Ben, is SAS kind of like leading the way with that or are other preprocessors doing a similar thing? With yeah, they all have mix-ins. Yeah, but not mix-ins, but actually intelligently grouping the mix-ins. So like, because I was looking at Ben's code going, ah, oh, that's going to put media queries like injected. Yeah, I think, I think SAS is the only one that's doing the media bubbling. Yeah. But I, I could be wrong. CSS. Less, less CSS? Yeah, right. yes. yeah I don't care. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> no, I really don't care. Uh, so uh, that's cool, right? So I, I was able to like write all my styles, keep everything together. I was pretty happy with it. I thought it was cool. I built like a lot of little sites doing that, like one pages. Worked great. Felt like a hero. High five myself all the time. It was great. Um, but let's uh, let's. Whoa, that's some dense SAS. 1,500 lines, huh? Okay. All right, so this is just for like, you know, displaying an iPad uh, thing in some certain circumstance, whatever it is. Uh, I wrote 1,500 lines of deeply nested crazy SAS. That's probably not the best SAS in the world. I probably would do better now. Maybe I wouldn't. But it's 1,500 lines, right? Uh, if you go to the Cafe Pacific thing, I'm so not on the internet. All right, hold on. Damn it, I knew I should have tested my talk. Right, let's, let's do this shit. All right, cool. <laughs> Jesus, shit, where is this? <laughs> Who gave me all the beer before? The lightning bolts. I was swearing a lot less before. So there's Discovery Mag. Uh, if I go and show you the uh, articles style sheet here, this is compressed, right? So that's okay. We'll just find it. Right. We'll do at, 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 oh God. Jared, can you make Chrome better? <laughs> I, type, I type some things. It doesn't know that. I'm going to let you finish Chrome, but... Uh, so, uh, if you if you if you like Google uh, Google if you search <laughs> Google my style sheet, bro. All right. So, uh, if if you just do a search in this particular style sheet, uh, you'll notice that the results of that search yields eighty four media queries. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. So, look, I mean, that's, that's not so bad because I don't have to read the media queries, but it's not awesome either, right? Um, that's a lot of repetition, and maybe you're not using that little block syntax, whatever, I don't know. But it kind of felt bad. I don't know. 
Does anyone else think that's bad? <laughs> that guy, I don't know, I'm wearing my glasses, I can't see who you are. <laughs> Sorry. That's bad. At least you're not heckling me like Craig would. Uh, okay. So. <laughs> Alright, we'll play that game. He's in the CSS. Oh, oh, cool. Cool. Oh, I'll just play table. Display table! <laughs> I got you there. You know, display, so, so who, who has used display table recently? Can anyone tell me why display table is actually awesome? One at a time, my god. It works like table. <laughs> yeah, because it works like a table and it's just like 9.6 again. Uh, no. So, uh, display table I think is really awesome because say your designer says, hey, this thing should be at the top, but on the, on the mobile it should be at the bottom. You can use uh, display table header group or header, Glenn, can you help me here? I'm dying now, I'm dying. <laughs> let's, let's find it. Uh, uh, let's see, table. Okay, so uh, that one. Display table header group. Uh, are you counting? Oh, yeah. That's not okay, so display table header group. So what that does is like you can have something at the bottom in your, in your HTML order. And you can say display header group. It'll pop it up to the top Whoa. of the container. Better than flex. Better than flex, uh, flex box. It's not coming for a long time. That is actually really well supported. So that is like the best hack to like when your designer like gives you those eyebrows that they do. You just you just do it and you're like, I have, you know, what else you got? Come on, do your thing. <laughs> uh, anyway, and, and you can do the same with footer group. So you can use footer group and you can be like, this thing was at the top, now it's at the bottom. Whoa. Super powerful. Uh, probably hacky. Don't email me. Um, anyway, so Big Magazine. Uh, let's have a look at Big Magazine again. Big Magazine. Uh, magazines have lots of images, as you can tell, uh, although half of them aren't loading because I'm not online for whatever reason, and it didn't download before. But um, Images are really hard when we're, look, we're, we're talking about devices that are high res and devices that are low res and the layout changes and sometimes it's a full width image and sometimes it's not, etc. Right? Um, in this magazine, uh, as you can tell, like this, this, uh, this particular template is, is called the, uh, I don't know, it doesn't matter anyway, but um, you, uh, as you can see, this one's like a three quarter width column and then like a quarter. Uh, but it might be reversed and the image might be, might be that big and so then you need to cater for that size module of the image at you know, all the device sizes that we cater for, which was four device sizes, so it was a desktop, a, a, an iPad, I think we did some stuff for iPad, uh, for iPhone landscape, we did iPhone, we also did like a Kindle-y kind of size, anyway, kind of sucked. Uh, who here has used picture fill? Nobody's used this shit. <laughs> Is that like amazing? Uh, well, we'll talk about it. <laughs> uh, so picture fill is written by the awesome and amazing Scott Gill. Uh, he works for uh, Filament Group. Has anyone ever seen come across the Filament Group? They're amazing. They do so much cool stuff for the web. Uh, Scott is amazing also. Um, the premise of this script is this script, who's seen, who knows about the picture element going into HTML? Some of you might have heard of this, right? So the idea is that you've got different devices, uh, different screen sizes, different blah, 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 whatever, uh, and, and um, we're going to put that in HTML somehow. And so this, this library aims to be a polyfill, kind of. Right? So you can use it today, see what it's like, put it in your magazines, put it in your sites, Hopefully it'll work. Craig, I'll take a uh, third old fashioned, please. Um, I wasn't joking. I wasn't joking. <laughs> so uh, the premise of picture fill is that you write a big block of HTML here. Um, well, uh, let's see. We'll go through this. Can you can you guys see this at the, at the back? Yeah. You're paying attention. You, you, yeah. Are you watching the football? No. You s jerks. Is it? Oh, oh no no no! You're watching my. Are you watching my slides back there? Yeah. I love you guys. They are red and blue. 
<laughs> just so that means. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is this is picture fill. The I, this big block of HTML here puts an image in the page, right? Like we've been putting images in pages for years, and it's not really that hard. But in picture fill, it's a little bit harder. So, uh, and this syntax has changed three times. In in discovery mag, I'm actually using the old syntax, which kind of sucks for me. So I have to change it in a lot of templates now. Um, so the, the idea here is that you've got this data picture attribute, which basically tells the script, hey, there is picture fill here. You need to do something. Uh, it then uses data alt, and it's going to use that for an alt image for accessibility on the images, which is great, right? Uh, and then what we're doing is we're setting a bunch of spans with a data source of like different size images, small, medium, large, extra large. And then you'll notice some of them have media queries, data media, for a media query. Right? And then, uh, no script. So if you don't have any script and you can't run picture fill and your browser sucks or you live like in Firefox before they remove that button, that was hilarious. Uh, then, anyone say that? Nobody? Yeah. I thought that was funny. Yeah. Anyway. See, I think, I think this is so funny, but you guys are just not laughing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> Uh, the, the idea of the no script is that when picture fill uh, doesn't exist because there's no script, you will just get an image and it'll be the small one because it's probably better than loading a big one. Right. So. It looks a lot like the picture element. It looks a lot like picture element. And picture element is, is coming along and then there's the, the one that Apple just, surprise, hey, we did something. Um, that was cool, where they ignored the community group that they told to yeah, that's <laughs> Anyway. Uh, who thinks that looks like the way that you would like to write an image tag in the future? <laughs> it's just Craig. Email Craig. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hey, that's a thing, and it's kind of interesting, right? Um, I'm going to do something here. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, also, also. Um, <laughs> I'm glad to say that hasn't died. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be doing that for a little while still. Yeah. Um, so, if nobody can read that, that says if it's less than IE9 and not IE mobile, just put in the medium image, because you're probably a desktop that isn't a good browser. So, if you want to write an image tag, you have to have, uh, let's see, depends on how many devices you're targeting, but let's say at least five span elements. Let's say uh, some conditional IE comments. Let's say a no script tag, and then you might get the image that actually works for your device. Uh, if, I, if I do that, wait, oh, I expected something to happen. Abort, abort. If I if I do if I do a bad blank or something like that, all right. So who could who could actually uh, tell me what all of that syntax was now? Like who could remember that? You could try, right? Chances are, like me, you'll probably mess it up. And I, you know, as I was complaining earlier, I wrote a lot of templates with this, and every single time I went back to the last template that I wrote and I copied it. And I pasted it, and then I changed it, and inevitably, I shipped a version, and I messed something up. And this just drove me absolutely batshit. Um, the result is great, but as a developer, this really, really sucks. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's it's not too bad. Like, it's not horrible. And I'm not slagging off Scott and his work. I think the work that he's done is, is fantastic. The result is great. Like, yeah. If, if you just use like image tag with some attribute, and then everything is just picked up. The, yeah. the difficulty with the image tag is that you're loading. Like, it's going to load the image that you put in the source. You, you can load you can small, like small. Yeah, one. you could load the small. Anyway, you load small. One. You can do it on the server, you can, like, any server template you use, you, you just generate this, this thing. I reckon we do it with math, generate the image on the fly. <laughs> 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 Fractals? Yeah. 
See my, uh, see my little. Yeah. Can you <laughs> 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 Ben says no. Thank you, Telstra. I just wanted to show you a picture, Phil. So this, this magazine, uh, as I keep saying, was like a lot of stuff, and all of it was in the DOM. Um, so, like, Chrome can't even draw this. Do you even draw? Do you even draw, bro? Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. And we're popping elements in and out of the DOM and the whole, you know, the whole thing. But um, still, performance is really tough. And if it's tough on Chrome, it's probably even tougher on Android 2.3, which we also, by the way, support. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, so Android 2.3 is, is basically the IE6 of the modern world right now. It's, it's making life really tough for a lot of people. Um, uh, OK, so, oh shit, big reveal. Um, so, <laughs> Uh, it was really, really tough. And when, you know, I tested this entire magazine, you know when people say, like, test with real data, test with real data, and you're like, yeah, 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 I will, I will, I am, I am, I am. Uh, like, a week before launch for this magazine, after working on it for eight months, I checked in, I, in, uh, I, I checked in Android 2.3 on an old device, slow CPU. You got one? Sort of. Your phone's great, but... Uh, so I checked, right? And the experience was I loaded the page and then the browser crashed. I had this for about two straight days. And I like my debugging on Android 2.3 went from, oh yeah, I know what I'm doing. I'm pretty reasonable at JavaScript and web stuff, right? I know what I'm doing. Was uh, I added alert statements in different parts of the script. <laughs> I'm not even I'm not even terrified to say that, but it was like it was dark, man. <laughs> like it works for Tim Thompson, it works for anyone. Yeah, it was it was really, really hard. Uh, and I had very little idea as to what was happening. In the end, my uh, alert statements brought me into picture fill. Okay. So this is picture fill, the library here. So as you saw, it's got this uh, data attribute thing. Um, and by the way, PictureFill has, um, I'm going to say no dependencies, but I think it has match media. Does everyone know about match media? No, I don't put your hands up and do something. No? I don't know what you do when it's no. So I guess you're doing, I guess you're doing a no. Um, match media is a JavaScript API to tell you about a media query. I'm a, I'm a demo for you. Craig, do we need to go? Eventually. All right. Actually, it iterates through all. How long have I been talking for? I don't even know. Um, you had two different sets of bells. It's okay. <laughs> the big bells. It's not there. I don't even remember the API. Jesus. Go on, it's fine. Okay, okay. So, Match Media is uh, it's set on window, obviously. Uh, so, in this case, it's true. Yeah, okay, whatever. So you can you can detect uh, support for match media pretty simply. You can just say like, is match media available in my browser? And in my opinion, if your browser does not support match media, it does not support media queries. Stop trying to put media queries into browsers that don't actually support them properly. Uh, that's IE8. IE8 does not have media queries at all, so don't do it. You're wasting your time. The premise of match media. Uh, is you can put a media query into JavaScript and you can pull it out and you get a result. So in this case, uh, window.matchmedia screen. And you'll see it returns a media query list object. Uh, and you'll see matches is true. I am definitely on a screen. So uh, match media screen and uh, min width uh, is, is 9,000 pixels. <laughs> You'll see that it doesn't match on my laptop right now. So let's, uh, let's decrease that to 90. And you'll see that it does match. Right? So match media is, is a way that you can, you can test a media query in your browser at a current time, which is right now. Uh, so if you resize your window and then hit it again, it'll give you false or true or whatever. Um, so picture fill uses that. 
Okay, so Pitcherfill uses this thing called. Uh, what's wrong? No, it just goes over a whole list of spans. Iterates through all the spans. This? Yeah. Mm. Every time. Every time. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> that was a really cool story. Uh, so, uh, obviously, picture fill, uh, apart from match media, there is a match media polyfill which also Scott Jill wrote. Uh, Scott Jill's amazing. Um, I like that guy a lot. Uh, so, what picture fill does is it, it doesn't use jQuery, so that's important because not everything should use jQuery. It says, all right, I need to go through all of the span elements on the page. Obviously, there could be quite a lot of span elements on the page, so we need to make sure that of the span elements that are on the page, it has an attribute called data picture. So there is picture fill within here, so keep going, right? Uh, and then uh, what it'll do is it'll find all these sources. So these are the tags where it had the image that was there and the media query that matches it, right? So we're going to iterate through that again. We're then going to find out if it has the, uh, the media attribute, the data media attribute, so there is a, a media query that we can, we can check for here. And then we're going to throw it into match media. And then we're going to collect them, see if they match, and we're going to throw it uh, into an array. Then we're going to uh, see if there's an existing image element in that picture fill thing that's available that's not in a NoScript tag. OK, well, is that in there? So it's, it's iterating through a parent. So we've already done like three layers of traversal and like checking attributes and stuff. And then it's going to check the, if there's an image there. And if there's an image there, uh, it's then going to go and check uh, which of, like, like, matches length. All right, so do, do any of the media queries match? Well, yes, something matches. I know this is boring. I'm telling you, right? <laughs> uh, go through, um, does the image, uh, is the parent node of the image the no script tag? OK, well, if it is, and there's no picture image, then create a picture image, get the data attribute, the uh, data alt attribute from the top of the, of the picture fill block, set that, append it, add a on resize <laughs> event, do it again. and do it all again. Every time, like what, how many times a second can you make that happen? Uh, when you open your keyboard, for example. When you open your keyboard in, in Chrome Inspector, if you're inspecting the page, or if you drag it in or out, if you turn your device the other way around by accident. Jared? Why are they using the, uh, the uh, match events? Why aren't they using match events? Uh, I believe, um, so the picture, the picture fill, uh, uh, polyfill, doesn't have support for it, so it uses like a debounced uh, resize handler. Um, people have also done experiments with um, using like a, a CSS element that you wait for like an on transition end. Do a lot of that seems really reliable. Um, and then there's another one, but actually, so of all the browsers that support match media, I think there are some bugs in um, Firefox, and I think Safari before version five doesn't support it at all. I think so. Anyway, don't you know? Don't quote me, but. Either way, uh, they're using a resize thing, they're using um, tom, DOM con, lo, content loaded. They're also using an um, uh, event listener for load. Uh, so it removes that event listener because um, it also sets an, an, an on load because IE doesn't have, or IE8 doesn't have DOM content loaded, I believe. They left that out for some reason. They decided to pull that like just before they released IE8, which is a great idea. Um, anyway. So when you have hundreds of picture fill elements in your DOM and a really, really big DOM, your browser comes to a screeching halt and it crashes. It's a really long explanation. I thought that would go a lot faster. OK, so I did what every developer does and says, that's fun. I can solve the problem myself. So um, uh, I, I actually, so I launched Cafe Pacific last July or August or something like that. And then I sat and sort of thought about the project and thought about what worked, what didn't work, and, and et cetera. Anyway, I released a script called MetaQuery. Um, it's all written in JavaScript. Uh, it's got a pretty neat 
uh, grunt file to compress everything and do everything for you. Um, it's teeny, teeny tiny. Uh, this is the uh, the ugly fire command, which uh, doesn't give us the smallest version of media of meta query. Um, but you'll see, I've also got a jQuery edition for the lame people, and uh, when it's, it's gzipped, it's it's not much smaller, like 40 bytes after you've been gzipped. So um, meta query is kind of rad, I think. Um, it's pretty small, and I've been working on trying to make it smaller. Can you guys see this at the back? You're good? You're all good? Okay, that's why they're cheering. Sweet. Okay. I'm going to make it smaller. Okay. There we go. Okay, so the premise of, media, uh, of meta query is you define some meta tags at the top of your document. Uh, you give it a meta name breakpoint. You give it a content name, which is like the name of the thing that you're targeting, a phone or a tablet or a whatever. And then you give it a media query. And that's it. You don't write a media query for every d different device in your CSS and a media query for like when you want to use a different image or anything like that. Uh, we've got a um, meta query here. I'm loading it asynchronously using Modernizer. You don't have to do that. Uh, Glenn uh, Madden is here. He's been using a, a meta query where he actually inlines it in the head of the document immediately after the meta tags. Um, and as you saw, it's what 400 bytes or something like that when it's gzipped. Um, so it's pretty small. Uh, and here's what it gives you. Just like a lot of other uh, sort of shim or polyfill or like uh, prefix free modernizer, all of those scripts, they add a class to your HTML element. Meta query does the same thing. So if you wanted a class to use in your CSS to say, when I'm on the phone breakpoint or the tablet breakpoint, just do it like this. You write it once, you don't have to remember any crazy syntax, you don't need to be using a preprocessor, you just put it in and you use it. In addition to that, uh, MetaQuery also gives you a JavaScript API. So instead of having to use match media and put in a media query and remember it, you can use this, uh, this event system here where when your media query matches, say you want to match on a phone, uh, this block will run when it matches on a phone. And uh, recent, I'm working on a branch now where I've removed the need for the polyfill, and I just say, go for your life if you have match media. Uh, if you just want to match on any old damn breakpoint there, you can. Oh, Glenn, this is going to be embarrassing. <laughs> no, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How is this going to work? This is, I don't know, man. Is that, is that, I don't know. Uh, John, Coat, Pen. You know what I'm looking for, right? Coat, Pen, John. Yeah, John, yeah, yeah. John Barton. Okay. Okay. Code. Don't read that. <laughs> Screenshots. Screenshots. Shit writing in code pen is frustrating. Oh, thank you, Safari. That was so good. So this is uh Oh, cool, I found it. Power of the internet. So John Bodden is working on a blog post which he still hasn't published, so I'm gonna show this to you anyway. Uh Lazy image loading with, with meta query. So, um, as you'll see, there are two images here. You need a full edition. Right, let's, uh, let's do this. Oh, Safari. <laughs> I can't use that. <laughs> Can I get you anything better? I really could do a beer. Yeah, you want a beer? Oh, yeah. Nine yeah. tiles? Uh, whatever. It's fine. Oh, my God. Okay. 
so anyway, so anyway, so when we when we load this, there uh, you can see some images. They're just random off some some site, whatever. There are four images, right? If I go and drag my browser, and I'm not in full screen, if I go and drag my browser in and reload and break the, if I do that. This is a good demo. Okay, so uh, as you'll see, there there are three images here. Uh, they're being loaded uh, asynchronously using I don't know. Um, so there's B1, B2, and B3, right? We haven't loaded a fourth image. If I go and drag out the browser until it gets over a thousand pixels, I expect that's maybe a thousand. This resolution is crazy. Okay, so now you'll see there's a fourth image there, right? There it is. And uh, now I'm going to show you how it works. Jesus, it's taking a long time. If you let this guy on the edge. <laughs> Taste is just great. Uh, okay. So, what John has done is he's done a lazy image load. So, if we go and look at his markup, it's just regular looking markup. And uh, there's some, some stuff. He's used a NoScript tag, which is cool. And basically what that does is it does not load the image. So, it's in the NoScript tag. That image is not going to be loaded by the browser. Right? Uh, he did that for the two images at the bottom. And then these two images, uh, the first two images, are just in the DOM. So then the script will go. And it uses MetaQuery. Uh, and he's using that uh, lovely technique of pop it runs the next thing the browser will do. Everyone loves that. It's great. Uh, but, so anyway, he basically just removes the script element, puts the image in, if it matches the media query, then everything's great. So basically you can have content that is either there or not based on the media query, and you keep your templates really simple, that's really great. How much longer could I go? Goodness. Uh, oh, and the last thing. This is like, you know, if you ever want to be a jerk, and be like, uh, I want to like give you like a benchmark how much faster the project is than yours. Let me, uh, let me write it in Node.js. I know your Ruby is great, but write it in Node.js. Uh, that is the, me the, the meta query edition of the picture field tag. Um, you put in an image, use a data MQ source attribute, and then use this little uh, template which basically will, will, will replace with the name of the breakpoint that matches. So it'll be images forward slash phone dot JPEG. That runs, I'm going to say, at least 10 million times faster than picture fill. Um, does not crash Android 2.3 in my specific situation. Um, I believe what I wanted to get out of this talk before I drank too much beer and talked a lot at you was... Uh, I just wanted to show you my little project. And if you maybe use it, or you find something interesting, or you're building a responsive site that's bigger than like a one pager, I'd really like to hear your experiences. And uh, go to the blues. Blues! No, no. I'm done. You got home now. One really good question. Who has it? Oh. Excellent. One really good question. There you go. Damn it. So, like, putting lots of media queries on the CSS works rubbish, but I've always wondered, does it actually degrade performance? Um, not when you're... No. Not really. I mean, the browser still needs to process it, right? Like, so there's some, there's some overhead there, clearly. But um, at the end of the day, it's, it's just gzipped, right? And it's sent down to the browser, and it's, it's, it's great. But it's more about it's more about being developer. Right? Like writing a lot of media queries is really hard and it's really time consuming and like you can mess it up and 
That's all. No. Is the answer. Can Why? we thank Sam, please? Okay.